Hello everybody and welcome to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Marcin Nemš Filipovic and I'm here with Alexander Raven Baguli. Uh, we have a pleasure to commentate this tournament for you. And uh, we are starting off the bat with Show versus Orange. Raven, how are you doing and uh, what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I'm doing really good. Glad to uh, to be back after like the day off we had yesterday of casting this tournament. But really glad to be back in this group. So yet another exciting one. But what this uh, match looks like is Orange has taken what appears to be an aggressive form of zoo, uh, of Druid, sorry, with the Fell Reaver in hand that isn't, you know, too common in the regular uh, Druid list we've been seeing in. Uh, whereas Sho looks like he's playing his uh, Patron Warrior, which, I mean, Sho's known for playing Warrior full stop, but very recently has uh, really been favoring that Patron. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I, I'm happy to see the Fell Reaver again and the aggressive uh, Druid. Do you, do you think it changes this matchup a lot? So it doesn't make it worse or better for the Druid? Um, I'm, I think it makes it a little bit better overall um, because Druid normally has to struggle to deal with a patron board, whereas the, uh, the matchup sort of flipped on its head a little bit where um, Orange has the ability to be very aggressive. We can see from this hand that it isn't a super, you know, aggressive opening, but two Druids of the Claw into Fell Reaver can really put on the pressure, and it's the type of uh, Druid style where just a Savage Roar out of nowhere can just win the game. The only problem is uh, Warrior does have a card called Execute, and if Fell Reaver gets dealt with in that way, it can be pretty harsh on the Druid. I think there is even a, a more dangerous combination of cards. So the, the biggest fear when you slam a Fell Reaver on board is that there will be a big spell turn. Something like a Whirlwind into Battle Rage into another Battle Rage, Inner Rage, and Execute, and you basically lose your whole deck and Fell Reaver, and you're really sad. Yeah, it's definitely a way to uh, to build around that and to, and to really just punish the Fell Reaver, which is, and that's the point of the card, right? It's high risk, high reward. So 8-8 uh, eight, eight for 5 mana, but you do burn potentially a lot of cards whenever your opponent plays a card. So it can be pretty rough, but it can also win you games. But this game is specifically going a, a little bit slow. Um, Orange doing pretty well with two Shredders up, something that Warrior doesn't really enjoy dealing with. But Show can clear the, uh, the two, at least the two Shredder parts of the shredders off, off the board with uh, an attack from the weapon. Yeah, I think that's uh, absolutely fine for, for Shao using the weapon here. And uh, with Acolyte, he'll be able to draw a card. Uh, see what's up with the shredders. So what do we get? What was actually riding inside those um, those mechs? Oh, oh that was... Wow. What? <laughs> what? I would never expect that. De demonic shredders. Okay, just a pair of... Uh... A pair of four threes, so shows probably a little bit. I mean, one coming out, you know, fair enough. There's two shredders. One's you presume one's going to be okay, and one's going to be, you know, you know, probably a low drop. But yeah, just um, having two four threes straight after your opponent's killed two four threes is pretty reasonable. Yeah, that's actually amazing for Orange because he is in fact playing this aggressive druid. So dealing eight damage to face after a show had to tank four attacking into that one shredder is actually huge and. Now, what can Show even do? There is a Sludge Belcher that he can put, uh, and th this will interact with uh, at least two minions on board. Maybe even, f maybe even three, but there is a hero power for sure. We know if he does that and does nothing else, there is a silence for Orange, and he will lose. But th from Show's perspective, he has to do something. He can slam one of them and uh, also kill it with the Acolyte. Then he will have uh, a possible uh, Unstable Ghoul, maybe, as a taunt. But it doesn't look good for, for Show. Yeah, it's definitely tough because, as you said, there's no easy way around this. If you go all in on Belcher, then you do know Silence, you just lost, right? You know, and that's it. So I don't mind the slam here. And um, do see Show that does play uh, Finley uh, in his patron deck. Not everyone plays that card, but it's definitely, you know, can swing a game a little bit over the course of a few turns, changing that hero power round. But in terms of this turn, I mean, I just don't think there's anything because Orange has a six damage from hand in form of the Druid of the Claw charge and uh, the Living Roots for two as well. So it's going to be a real struggle, and I don't see Show getting out of this alive. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I would like to say this, this shows the power of the aggressive Druid, but uh, what it really shows only is that if there is double Succubus riding a pilot Shredder, <laughs> you cannot do much about it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty ruthless. A 4-3 four, for 4 that summons a 4-3 when it dies. <laughs> Mini can. Um, and this probably highlights the uh, the joy that everyone will experience once Standard kicks in and Shredder won't really be a card anymore. So um, people will appreciate maybe not seeing turns like that uh, in, the, in the future in some competitive play. 
Yeah, that's absolutely right. But on the other hand, if you still enjoy Shredder's and Succubus's writing inside of it, you can still play Wild Format. So that's something. But uh, Raven, let's remind everybody, what are we doing here? Uh, it's Carson Champions League, $10,000 prize pool. And today we are facing Group C, which is, uh, I think, uh, a group of death. Yeah, I think in a tournament that's probably one of the most stacked tournaments I've seen for a long time, there's four groups with four players in each group. Um, group C does... It's a hard call, but Group C does seem like one of the hardest. It is Show and Orange, as you guys can see, and then the other two plays are Live Coach and Strive Pro. So for you know, the highest of the top end players in one group, and as I said, the tournament overall is quite stacked. But this uh, this group, I would have to agree with you, Nymph, that is probably the group of death out of all of them. So let's recap what happened. We started on Monday, we had Group A with Stan Sivka, Colento, Dog, and Sixo. Stan Sivka and Sixo uh, did advance from Group A, so we will see them in the in the playoffs, uh, the top eight playoffs. Colento and Dog got eliminated. And if you if you if I'm saying Colento and Dog gets eliminated, this means the tournament is really stacked and harsh. Did yeah, they? and then in Group B we had Ecop, RDU, Pavel, and Hoy, with Pavel and Ecop uh, moving through to the next stage. So RDU and Hoy being eliminated, which again, you know. Just, just another two names that you just wouldn't expect to hear eliminated in the first stage of the tournament. But when the tournament's this stacked, it's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And tomorrow we are, uh, we're having Group D with Ostkaka, Hannibal Z2, Ties of Time and Ties. But that's tomorrow. Right now we are facing Rogue and Warrior. Yeah, this um, Orange is looking pretty okay so far. Um, having the prep is definitely nice maybe to get into sprint. Because something that you, you need as the Rogue is the card draw. Uh, because the warrior normally has that card draw, and both decks actually rely on you know having large hands and pulling off big combos. But Orange is looking okay so far with the early minions that you can potentially backstab uh, into coin SI, but that might be a bit too much just to deal with a ghoul at this point. I think weapon is fine. So backstab just uh, weapon up, kill the ghoul, uh, yeah. not losing anything. Uh, he still has a, a passable coin for SI if he needs it next turn, even though it, he will be floating some mana. But uh, I feel like Orange is in okay position. Uh, at the moment, he decided not to use the backstab, which which means that it might be a bit awkward to deal with the one free until he draws deadly poison, and suddenly it's fine. <laughs> well, how to kill acolyte without killing two damage to it? Uh, well, you can back. Uh, yeah, true. That's a good point. You would take one, won't you? Um, yeah, that's a kind of a tough one actually. He didn't go for the clear on the girl, as you said. So maybe being a little bit punished, but also his idea would have been this turn would just be to uh, backstab the girl, hit and then I side to either, you know, face or something like that, yeah. just to, uh, you know, get get more tempo and get more value out of the uh, the backstab as opposed to just casting it and uh, using the hero power. He might have a really nice Edwin this turn uh, if he goes for it. And with Edwin Van Cleef, the, the situation is that if Warwick not answer it, if Warwick doesn't have an execute, you can just win the game right there. And he's going for it, I believe. That is a yeah, call into Edwin. And, and to be honest, it's not something like the good thing. The good thing for Orange here in this big play is that Warrior doesn't mulligan for execute against Rogue. You know, like you just don't, right? You yeah. you mulligan for like uh, the fire war axe is a high priority, um, and then maybe you know death spite and then the patrons and stuff like that. But you don't mulligan for execute. So the earlier Orange gets his Van Cleef out, we can see. Yeah, the less likely statistically that you know show has an execute available and something to proc the execute as well. So dropping that AA is pretty huge. Yeah, it's a, it's absolutely huge, and uh, it was a nice plan from the beginning where Orange uh, kept that backstab specifically for that turn. And uh, now show is in trouble. So if you go for Mr. Finley, what can you get? You can get a ping. Like you know, you're going to slam Belcher next turn. So what's the best? If you if you play Vulture, is it Finley and Armorsmith maybe? Because you know this Edwin is going for face. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. Um, I was gonna say ping is pretty good for the Finley because you can ping your um, your patrons, and you can also more importantly, if this board gets like Blade Flurried now, he can actually ping execute if he you know if he draws into it next turn. So it just gives him the option, where it's not you know crippling him too much for the for the mid to late game. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And now an uh, interesting situation for Orange where he's a bit off curve. If you if you just uh, you can prep oil SI. That's uh, I think the biggest amount of damage. Just uh, buffing your Edwin, buffing your weapon, uh, going uh, face fully. Uh, what you can also do is kill the Acolyte of Pain to deny the draw. Uh, you know that your opponent was able to draw cards, and this is showing exactly that there is no execute. 
So your Edwin is uh, secure for now. So maybe you just want to deny the draw as much as possible. But yeah, I think that's fair because he's shown that he doesn't have a way to kill Edwin. So you may as well not give him multiple chances at drawing that way. And, you know, you can't really sniff at hitting for 11. That uh, seems pretty reasonable. And he's still next turn has as your Drake potentially into prep like this or something for extra damage or even be able to just almost guarantee an SI with the, with the prep as well. Oh, man, there are so many good cards for Orange. If he gets a sap, if he gets um, as backstab enough, like Eviscerate would be great. Oh, man, he got a sap. That's huge. He can just slam Azure Drake, prep, sap, go face. That's actually just insane. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going right for Orange so far. Um, yeah, this is very scary. At this point, and because it's Rogue, I mean, Orange is running low on cards, but even the Thalnos is cycle, right? So, like, next turn he can Thalnos SI um, and then potentially get some cycle out of it the turn after, if the game even lasts that long. Because... We can see that shows now in full hell, uh, and there's still that 11 uh, 8 on the board, which is extremely scary. I think that's basically it, because if he yep. plays the Belcher, he's dead on board. Edwin kills the Belcher, Azure Drake kills the 1-2, the and then sh uh, Orange goes for face. So a super fast win, and really a courageous win as well with that Edwin play. Yeah, and, and really fast game so far, pretty crazy. So just talk about the lineups. Orange has Rogue, Paladin, and Druid. And show has Paladin, Warrior, and Druid. And interesting that we sort of, uh, I saw it in the Skype chat, half mentioned like, oh, Orange hasn't taken Hunter, <laughs> which is, it seems a bit odd in all honesty, because the last few tournaments, even going back to like DreamHack and maybe the one before that, yeah, um, in DreamHack Winter, uh, he he took Hunter in DreamHack that he just come back off her and won recently. He took Hunter. You know, like it's really odd to just see him not take a deck that he's just been so stable and consistently performing with. Yeah, absolutely, yes. But uh, he was also experimenting with Fell Reavers in Hunter deck, if I believe, uh, if I remember oh, okay. correctly. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting, because the thing about the Fell Reavers in Hunter is you never really go to fatigue as Hunter anyway, so you don't really care about the card draw or the card burn, should I say. That's right. Okay, but the show is not uh, dead yet. Orange still has to win with his last deck, and his last deck is, uh, is Paladin? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we've seen we've just seen his rogue, we saw his druid, and um, again we'd have to, you know, sort of presume it's secret paladin. But then again, you know, we didn't think anyone would be bringing the aggro druid to, to the tournament. So, you know, maybe bringing like off the off the uh, expected deck seems like a, a good play for orange. And again, and by not bringing his sort of trademark hunter deck, maybe he's thinking right. Well, everyone knows I always bring this deck. They'll be expecting it. Should I just bring something completely different? So, what I would expect, if this is not a secret paladin, I would expect Orange bringing the aggressive paladin. Aggressive paladin with some divine favors and uh, a, a lot of fast minions. Because if it's kind of in line with the fast druid as well, where you want to exploit this one control deck your opponent has and, um, and always kill them really fast with, the, with those fast cards. Yeah, and what, what's really interesting about uh, aggro druid and aggro paladin specifically is that it can be difficult for your opponent to know what style it is until like turn four or five potentially. And you know, suddenly you, you have to just flip your play style because if you expect secret paladin, well, they still might go, you know, turn two, coin, mini bot into, you know, juggler, muster, uh, you know, all those cards are still in the deck, right? It's just that they're in then some additional surprise first. But we do see orange is actually playing C Paladin, so we go into the third game. Yeah, and we've seen Consecration as well, so he's playing at least one, and uh, we had a discussion about it on, on Tuesday, I believe, that some players play Consecration, they, they some players don't. But this matchup, I feel, is um, in favor of Shaw, so with uh, this kind of warrior, specifically with uh, Finley as well, and a bit of a better hero power, he will be able to deal with the one ones and with the creatures that Orange is putting into play. Uh, he just needs uh, answers for the big turns, like Mistress Challenger to have an Execute, or maybe Beacon Hunter, uh, or even Board. So, um, show yeah, he, yeah, Yeah, sorry, he either he, he either needs the answers like the Executes, or he needs to actually just put Patrons on the board on turn 5. And then by that point, the Paladin, it becomes very difficult for the Paladin to come back. But the Druid Hero power from Finley is actually really good, because also on top of buffing the weapons that Show has, um, and then still gaining some armor and dealing with the 1-1s, as you said. Um, you can use it to proc the secrets quite easily, 
which as we can see now. So now like Finley's guarded, so at least he can do something else this turn and not have to just run Finley into a 2-1. And as we can see, Finley would have actually just died straight up if yeah. uh, if he took the juggle there. So Druid Hero Power, really good for show at the moment. Absolutely. And Orange is missing turn three. He can still uh, play a minion here. And then after that, he'll have a pretty good curve uh, into that Mistress Challenger. Uh, what about Shaw's hand? He has Acolyte of Pain, which is nice. He also has Death Spite, which is the, the best card for Warrior. You always want to have it versus, uh, versus Paladin. And he gets the Patron, so it improved immensely with that one card. Yeah, this is pretty huge, because it means um, even if he holds onto the coin, which I think he will... Oh, is he going for a clear now? Oh, okay. He's going to clear it. Um, it means that even if he gets Death Spite, he's got one more turn for the really good setup for turn five with the Inner Rage, if he can draw it. But even if not, Death Spite into the even two patrons is pretty difficult when Orange will almost certainly want to just drop Mysterious Challenger turn six. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And now the Death Spite uh, taking care of this pilot, the Shredder. So Shaw will try to take initiative on board. <laughs> oh man. Patient Assassin is actually bad in this situation if we see patrons next turn, but we might not. Our uh, show still only has this one whirlwind effect, but Patient Assassin at least uh, kills the Acolyte. Yeah, kind of weird though, because it still gives it, uh, it gives it one card draw, right? Because it doesn't take damage, so yeah. that's still pretty good. It's doing the best it could do. Um, really weird, but this is actually, I think, a really good turn for show, even though he can't uh, in a rage now. Yeah, because I think you just don't, you know, you just you never go. Oh well, I can't in a rage, so I won't make two patrons on a paladin's empty board. <laughs> it's pretty reasonable, and this will actually almost certainly alter Orange's uh, line of play. Yeah, because now if you play Mistress Challenger, there is a chance that uh, one of the patrons will run into Noble Sacrifice, get another patron, and uh, make it a bit more difficult. But uh, you know, Death Spite is another card like Pilot the Shredder that's actually rotating out with the standard. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. Like, I'm kind of looking forward to see whether uh, Blizzard actually go, okay, we've took this weapon off the Warrior. We feel that Warriors should have X amount of weapons available. So are they going to design a new, you know, like a new four mana weapon or something like that? That'll be really fun. Yeah, looking forward to that. And uh, show with an uh, amazing board, double armor smith, unstable ghoul, and, uh, and patron. So it has a lot of potential. Not only it will give him health, Paladin cannot really go for that for that ghoul without activating extra pa patron and extra health. So Mysterious Challenger doesn't feel that great, even though it's still the best play. Yeah, it's really rough. I mean, um, again, killing off the, the ghoul only really helps uh, show at this point. Um, holding off to try and get, like, Redemption pass into Tyrion to get double Tyrion, again, just doesn't do much when Show's going to have so many patrons available to him. So what will be the play here? He's getting another patron. He knows there, there is a whirlwind effect, uh, but he will not activate it yet. Just attacking into a 2-1 uh, doesn't change much. Uh, gives him 2 armor, though, 2 life. And then he has a couple of options. He can go for another patron if he wants more patrons on board. But how many, pa how many patrons is too many? Also, uh, he might expect repentance. And if you expect repentance, what is the order of play you do? Yeah, I mean, I think that you do want to play the Acolyte and then play Death Spite because it means you can get an extra 4 damage off with Death Spite and you set up for the following turn in which, worst case, if there's randomly an Equality Consecrate out, you can stack patrons again because there's already a second patron in Show's hand. And there's no rush for Dr. Boom. Look, you know, look at Show's board, right? He's, he's going to gain all the health in the world. He still has that Druid hero power to gain him a little bit more armor. And he can follow up with Boom later if he needs to, but enabling potentially another wave of patrons against a class that already struggles, I definitely think is the option here. Yeah, absolutely. And now this board is so annoying for Orange because you want to go face to deny the, the armor, but on the other hand, you know the armor smith uh, is going to, to be there, and like both of them, and there's another word in effect that you can see on board even. So attacking into an armor smith with a minion doesn't make make uh, makes much sense. But uh, he goes for the patron though to deny uh, a possibility of patron spawning from the whirlwind. Yeah, he's just reducing the uh, the potential. But oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, executes a reasonably okay draw for show here. You can just remove the ten five off the board, um, and what he can do is actually just use his minions as weapon to clear the Tyrion up and drop the second patron again. 
So you then you end the board with that with two patrons again and with the paladin putting you know putting that is ten five into a patron just to kill one off, you know he doesn't have great answers on hand. And uh, the Tyrion's probably the best he's got. Kind of interesting is valuing the uh, the potential second card draw from the Acolyte over the patron for popping the shield. Well, he's uh, Shao is uh, playing a lot of control decks, so he knows the value of um, of the card draw, especially in a situation where he uh, he's dealing with Tyrion and he's dealing with uh, Mr. Shandra as well, so he's not expecting that many threats. And even if the threats come, uh, if he has more cards, he will have answers to those threats. So at the moment, he's not that concerned about dealing damage to, to Orange. It's more about just uh, maintaining his board control and position. Yeah, and I really like just playing Ghoul here, to be honest. Uh, just execute, drop Ghoul, and then uh, the... the the Ashbringer from Orange doesn't really do too much. Is he going to execute? I'm, there's no reason not to, right? Or are you just that confident? Oh, okay, wow. Interesting. Well, you have a lot of health, and uh, the, a, an attack has to come. You're not afraid of an owl. And if an, a, an attack comes, what happens? Like, he will attack the ghoul, let's say, with the 5-3, with the and then run his Mysterious Challenger into one of the, the patrons. Not really. Yeah, and I think what, what this does as well is, like you said, the challenger isn't actually that much of a threat, and it means if Boom comes down, which is the only, you know, real big card left in that deck, he can just slam execute, gone, done. Yeah. You know, he's already got the answer, and he had so much health, and leaving the the, uh, the 10 attack challenger up seems pretty okay. So really good play from show. Probably feeling good getting that win after the very two fast games from, uh, you know, Orange taking those two really quickly, so... His warrior is now gone, and he's locking in his own paladin to match against oranges. And uh, the paladin from orange, we've seen it already. Um, there was keeper of Luar, so nothing surprising there. And again, an interesting curve, five, six, seven. He needs those those early drops here, especially in this matchup. I feel I I, I think like versus warrior, uh, he somehow could get away without the the important cards. But then Shaw has those secret oh. keepers. This is huge. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Secret Keeper um, in general, but in this matchup specifically, um, it can sometimes just win you the game because already Orange cannot. If that was like you, you know any other card, then Noble Sacrifice might have been a consideration, so we can use his mana. But it wasn't. It was a Secret Keeper. So now, I mean, and there's an Avenge that Orange just can't play. So there's so many issues that Secret Keeper like locks your opponent out so hard, and the only real way to counter the Secret Keeper is to um, to have your own, or what Orange is going to have to do, and coin Karkhammer and kill it, which yeah, is that's... horrendous, because you lose the Divine Shield off the Karkhammer. You do, but you have to deal with the, the, the Secret Keeper. Like, last turn, you couldn't even Noble Sacrifice, because you would just buff it and not kill it. So that's probably what you have to do before this um, gets out of control. Like, this Secret Keeper is, a, is will be potentially buffed. Like, there's a lot of secrets in the Paladin decks. So if the next turn for, for show is another Secret Keeper and like, maybe two secrets, which you, which you can expect, is uh, it's just going to be too, uh, too much. But uh, he decides that he will take the risk and try to uh, get some more value. Maybe he thinks like he wants the coin for a Sludge Belcher on turn 4. Yeah, I think the issue Orange has is that if he went into Karkham and cleared the 1-2, then he's got no good way of dealing with the minibot at all. So, other than just stacking attacks in, so it's going to be really rough for him. So I think what he's doing now is taking a hit on turn two by just hero powering and saying, okay, you know, have the very, you know, have this super early game, but, you know, like in the next, so like turn four, five, maybe, then I'm going to look really good. Because although the show's got off to an amazing start, if you look at his hand, the longer the game goes on, Orange is looking pretty nice with his challenger boom with Belcher beforehand as well. Yeah, that's a really good point, because next turn, show if he doesn't draw something like a Pallet to Shredder, he will be forced to play those, those Creepers, and even though there's a lot of minions, a single Belcher can, can stop a lot of this power, and if he follows up with all the big stuff, uh, even getting a weapon somewhere along the way, he might be able to survive, and the show was conservative before with, uh, uh, with his weapon, so he kept it for, uh, for minions, but now he decides this is the time, uh, to go for phase, especially with the second cog hammer in hand. Exactly, yeah. And the thing is for Orange as well, the two secrets that he's drawn are the two secrets that he almost certainly runs two of. So it's not too bad that he's got the challenger to put down, probably before these secrets come out. 
potentially. But like, if you're ever going to draw secrets, you want it to be these. Because if it was, say, redemption or repentance, it means he has to play them from hand. And then, you know, his challenger doesn't draw them anyway because they're normally one of. So pre pretty good there. He goes does go for the muster and avenge to almost guarantee it. Um, this does get the avenge out of the way and still have the ability to draw the second one from the challenger. So not too bad at all from Orange. Yeah, absolutely. That, missed, uh, that, that master for battle was really good for him on that specific turn. Because now he will start uh, to play the cards on curve. Uh, but Shao, uh, fighting against that board and uh, Blessing of Kings can help him to kill one of the biggest uh, creatures or just uh, put a threat on, uh, on his side of the board. He still can play Secret Keeper on that same turn. So I wonder how is he going to play it out. Just going for the token and probably going for face with uh, the 6 attack um, Shield at me bot. Yeah, it's definitely good. There was a thought to Blessing of Kings the Spider because what's nice about putting it on the Creeper is that it's a 6 health. Um, a lot of the time, you know, when it's not been damaged. So 6 health is really awkward to deal with. But the, on the flip side of that, an Owl shuts it down very hard because it removes the Death Row and the buff. But Orange is going to follow up with his Mysterious Challenger. Probably feeling okay. Show has a lot of small tokens he can use to proc the first, you know, like the Noble Sacrifice from the uh, Mysterious Challenger. But looking at Show's hand with just a cock hammer, Orange is probably just hoping that he doesn't run a Divine Favor as well and then uh, feeling pretty comfortable. Well, it's still a bit dangerous looking at all this damage. There is, uh, if you if you proc noble sacrifice with one of the one of the minions, uh, you still have ten damage that you can go um, go with for face. Like even more with the secret being played. Yeah, that's true. So what's that? Eleven, right? So you just take him to three. And there if is he the chooses weapon. to go face, so that, that's that's pretty harsh, because you know Orange could uh, start racing. Um, especially with uh, with the Sludge Belcher in hand. But there's always this threat that, hey, if the Sludge Belcher dies, he, my opponent only needs three damage, and that's weapon and one one spider just killing me next turn. So Orange might be forced to play Belcher and start trading, but even then, Sho can draw into something to deal that damage that's needed. Yeah, and the three charges on the Cogham is pretty big, actually, because at first, like, Belcher Noble Sacrifice looks like the obvious play, and that's what might have to come down. But when Sho can, has so much health, he just doesn't care, then he can use his weapon, or if he has a token spare, you know, to proc the secret. So this is lo looking pretty rough, actually. Um, Orange had the late game, but Sho might have just gotten a little bit too quick, and that Blessing of Kings making all the difference, if I'm honest. So if he goes for Noble Sacrifice and Belcher, can he stop uh, Lethal here? 7-7 uh, seven, seven killing the 6-6, six, six, then uh, there is a Venge as well. Hmm. That should be... Okay, he will be uh, safe with the Noble Sacrifice because the Belcher yeah. does not die to everything, so Shou still needs to draw into something to deal a bit more damage. Is uh, Trusso champion enough? He buffed he buffed the Secret Keeper. Is that enough, though? <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I think... Oh, this juggle actually changes things, right? Not really. There is a Noble Sacrifice. Like, we have to... Um... Yeah, but you can run the 1-1 one, one in. If the juggle hits the Belcher, he runs the 4-3 into the Belcher oh, wow. weapons the... Yeah, That's weapons it. the one two and then the three four attacks. Oh man, that juggle! Like it had to go into face <laughs> or it had to go into sludge belcher. Now it's enough. Now it's lethal on board. <laughs> oh, that's pretty crazy. Good, good work, juggler. Shows trained it? them well. I think it is right. No wait. Did he, he attack? He attacked in raw. Oh, show realizes he missed it. Oh man. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Because the 4-3 should have gone in, and then, you know, the weapon goes into the sludge, and exactly. then 3 attacks the face, so... show really, um, crazy from show actually. Sho's sort of known as one of the super stable, consistent players as well, so, um... He's probably, as you can see on the camera, he's not happy that he's missed that, and uh, a little bit upset with himself. Do you think Orange also missed that lethal? Because Orange is just looking at the screen. <laughs> he's, like, unfazed, he's like, okay, I'm fine with that. But uh, still, yeah, I think yeah. the, the game is uh, over anyway, right? Um, or not really. Uh, Orange can deal with stuff. He can kill... I think because that's Coghammer, it's over, right? Because he yeah. can't play... Yeah, I think so too. He can um, kill the True Silver, but uh, he cannot deal with everything on the board. So Show yeah, is he not can't, being punished. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's just too too much anyway, isn't it? Okay, so what's the best? Uh, you, you need to kill the 4-2. So you attack with one minute in the 4-2. You need to kill the 3-2, uh, Juggler, and then there's uh, 
There are two min minions who can heal for two, go to five, take three, and there's still three damage that kills you. So whatever you do, however you want to win this game, there is no way to do it. And and th we have a tie. Yeah, a little bit, little bit dicey for a second there for show as he uh, did miss that, but he was so far ahead that Orange just needed maybe that one more mana to play Tyrion to feel a little bit safer. But yeah, that is going to be tied up now, and it's Orange's Paladin versus, I believe, Show's Druid. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Like I, I don't have the lineups in front of me, but that is in fact Druid, so a really good call. And this time Orange is getting a really good start. Secret Keeper into Shielded Minibot, into Keeper of Uldaman and Coghammer, so this is really nice. And Keeper versus Druid is one of those cards that you really want to have in your hand, because Druid ramps, and if Druid ramps into a, something big like Dr. Boom or maybe Ancient Floor, if you can change it into a 3-3 and deal with it, that's great for you. Yeah, it's definitely one of the matchups where you uh, you lean more towards making a you know putting the effect on an enemy minion as opposed to buffing one of your own. Because a lot of matchups you use the uh, keeper of Alderman to just increase tempo and power on the board. Uh, whereas uh, you know I completely agree. If like Druid of the Claw comes out and then you can just make it a three three, it's it's so good for the party. Now a really nice um, response from Orange to deal with that Aspirin, even though Aspirin didn't do much. In this very situation, because Shaw has nothing to ramp, uh, he has Shade of Nextramus. Still, um, he might actually go even for Innervate Druid of a Claw, just to have more this, power on board early game. Yeah, this would be an interesting one because it does mean Orange can actually follow up with Minibot Avenge, and then the turn after he can play the Alderman uh, uh, if he needs to. Oh man, another Alderman. Yeah, this is looking pretty nice for Orange. For now, but uh, Show doesn't have a bad hand. Uh, Show got the most important card in this matchup, which is Swipe. And uh, for now, he can't use it really. Uh, normally, there is just a, a Swipe response to Master for Battle, but it's it, it feels better if you have a Swipe in hand. And Double Innervate, you know, if he continues drawing big creatures, something like Ancient of Lore... <laughs> just something go. like, what, Nimsh? <laughs> oh, man. This is... Um, it was looking good for, for Orange, but uh, with Innervate, Ancient of Lore, and the 4-6 still being on board... Yeah, this is a tough one. Do you actually um, kill off the 5-4? I think you do. Oh, he's uh, he's actually going for phase. Uh, the problem with this is that if there is another... Well, there is the Keeper. <laughs> you're in a bad position. If there is another Coghammer, uh, you're in a bad position. So uh, you hope that uh, your opponent will have to kill your, your creature. But versus Paladin, it's, uh, it's a dicey play. But uh, it's absolutely a play that you can make. It's a high-risk, high-reward. And maybe maybe Show felt like he needs to pressure a bit more. And uh, in this matchup, I think the advantage is on the Paladin side overall, and in, in most of the matches. That's why sometimes you need to make those risky decisions to give yourself a chance, a bigger chance to win the game with uh, Savage or Force Nature. Yeah, and um, Orange had to feel pretty good about the previous play because he'd just seen Swipe, right? So the one thing that clears up that board really nicely would have been Swipe, so the odds on Show having two, pretty low. And now drawing straight into Lotheb to follow up his... Uh, really good because on turn six is normally a turn where the druid uh you know like maybe plays like shredder wrath or you know like maybe a wild growth because there's nothing like too too common maybe sylvanus Thorison? that gets dropped as a six drop yeah and thorison so playing the low there but one challenges a card like thorison and locks out any uh you know spell combos or anything like that so really nice play for orange there and he still has the keeper Alderman to follow up with any uh you know troublesome minions that come out yeah, and uh, if he wants to pressure, he can even just um, do it up and then change the, the Silver Hand Recruit into a, a free free. So he has a couple of options. Uh, easy way to, to deal with the 2 4 and, and try building an advantage on board. Is it the time to, to play secrets? I think it might be. The problem is the secrets feel really slow, but it's hard for us to want him to play Alderman because Dr. Boom's about to get played. So, uh,. Show seeing both Alderman's out. Alderman's pretty much the only answer to Boom other than Repentance. Um, so it's going to be a li little bit rough, but there is nine power on the board from Orange. So, you know, definitely not the end of the world. Yeah, there's one other answer that you can use versus Boom. You can use uh, those good old minions that attack into it, or you can just ignore Boom and pressure. But then that's really risky if you don't kill the bombs. I think you, you, you need to kill the bombs at some point. Like, looking at three minions from Druid's perspective, like from... When, when you're facing Druid, you have to think about that Savage Roar. It is somewhere there in the deck. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And uh, the bomb there, taking off the three-three. I do like the clear the bombs and then just play. Obviously, playing everything here. Oh my god, another yeah. another bomb clearing off the minion. A little bit rough. Um, he does. You know, the juggler's safe though, which is why he didn't try and snipe a bomb. Um, because he wanted his juggler to live. Uh, and he does get, you know, a couple of secrets down. So pretty powerful board if this board survives. And now we're going to see how Show chooses to try and um, play around what these secrets could be. Because one isn't uh, Noble Sacrifice, right? And that's normally the one you have to play around when you have a single minion on the board. It might force him into a hero power just to, you know, test for Noble Sacrifice. Which is fine. I mean, this is Paladin without cards in hand. And if those minions get... Uh get buffed with a competitive spirit they are still not doing that much damage and you have the tools like paladin is out of cards and that's the key thing you if you kill everything here you still have ancient of lore on your side you can draw cards you can heal yourself but even this turn you can just slam uh lotha or force nature to clear it so a great position for for show yeah and the second he realized uh, what the secrets were the avenge guaranteeing to go on a two health minion and there being just one more two health minion left means that Force of Nature was so nice there, just to clear up. It does leave a token on the board, but, you know, the uh, show's probably not too concerned by that. And that looks like the biggest challenger I've ever seen for just a split second there. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't bring any secrets. So it was <laughs> checking the deck just in case. It's like, what? No secrets in the deck? <laughs> this isn't what normally happens. <laughs> and this is it uh, with Force of Nature um, from the top. Show is actually reverse sweeping orange. From 2 0, or, or rather from 0 2 to 3 2, because that boom is going to face, and then force is enough to finish the match. Yeah, what a, what a crazy set. I mean, how quick the first two games were. I thought this was going to be, you know, like a 3 0 or maybe a, a quick 3 1, and then Show's actually brought it all the way back. So, uh, you know, pr pretty crazy there from Show. Like, good work for him. Orange isn't out, though. Orange is just in the loser's bracket sort of area of the group where he will face the loser of the next match, which is Strifeco versus Live Coach. Uh, and then the winner of that gets to face the loser of the winner's match. So, Orange isn't out quite yet. Yeah, but today somebody is going to be out and two people will advance to the, to the final day, to the top eight. But uh, for now, give us some time, guys. We'll prepare the next match for you, and we'll be back after a short break with more Hearts in Action. 